My best practices demonstration is on graphic organizers. Now, graphic organizers are things that um, I think we're all familiar with, at least what they are, but we're also going to talk about why they work and why they're an effective strategy. So a graphic organizer is a tool that's used to organize information and ideas, and this helps to facilitate learners' comprehension of newly acquired information. A graphic organizer presents information through both visual and spatial modalities. So not only is the student actually seeing the text of the information, but it's also laid out spatially for them. And Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences suggests that students are better able to learn and internalize information when it's presented in more than one modality. So who benefits from these? Well, because they integrate both text and visual imagery, they actively engage a wide variety of learners, and this includes English language learners and students with disabilities. They can be used in any subject area and at any grade level. And like I said, they allow students to not only see the text, but also they get to see and visualize the connections between each idea and how they go together. So they work because our brains naturally organize and store information. Uh, we create these structures in our heads and um, we do that to store newly acquired information and we connect it to things that we already know. That's why when we're, um, when we're teaching a lesson, it's so important to activate prior knowledge because the new information that we give students, they automatically take that and they try to connect it to things that they already know in order to make sense of what they're hearing. And so a graphic organizer is basically a visualization of these mental structures that we create. We should love these because not only are they evidence-based, but we can use them for all learners and all content areas, and they minimize the need to reteach content. If you're going ahead and you're connecting that new information to prior knowledge and you're giving it to them visually and spatially, then it gives they're getting this information in a variety of ways. So they're more likely to get it the first time, and you're not going to have to go back and reteach it. They've also been shown to increase engagement and motivation. So there's a lot of types of graphic organizers out there. Um, you can see some of them are a little more complex than others. Um, there's also some that are designed in different patterns or like the uh, roller skate down here. So they really can be modified to suit your needs and your age group. A few examples of um, different graphic organizers that you can use. Uh, this one is a character map, and this, to, this helps to describe your main character in detail. Um, it kind of pulls out their thoughts and their actions and how those relate to each other. And this is good to use with either a short story or a novel or something in a language arts class. This is a cluster map. And this is good for an organization of concepts and ideas. So this is a good pre-reading activity and um, something that you can use where they can chart um, knowledge that they already know. And they can even pick up and add to this later after they read. A compare and contrast chart. Um, this is honestly, this is sort of like a, um, like a square version of a Venn diagram. But basically you have the names across the top row. Um, um, it's at the heads of the columns, and then you put facts and details in the rows beneath. And that helps you to compare. That could be anything from characters to situations and concepts within a story, or even within a math class. It is, this doesn't have to just be language arts. Um, Cornell note-taking, this is actually a strategy um, that's good to use with uh, reading from textbooks or other materials that are a little more complex. Um, and so what this does is it gives the main points, but then it also has you pull out your evidence or your data. So that way you're, um, if you have to write a paper on a certain subject, this helps you pull your support from your text. Um, a fishbone is fun. Um, this one is for organizing details and events through cause and effect. So basically at the top you would have what the cause is, and then you would have the effect that that cause created. 
and that could be used for anything from language arts, from how the actions of a character affect the story. This could even be used in a science class um, if you're changing, um, kind of depending on what your independent variables are and then the effect that maybe it has on your dependent variables. So there's a lot of ways that you could use this. The KWHL chart is one that I know I've used, um, I remember using in school myself, um, but this starts with what you know, what you want to know, it gives strategies for how you're going to find information, and then what you learned. And again, this isn't just reading, it doesn't just have to be characters from a book. Um, and this could be um, a social studies topic if you're wanting to research a certain um, figure from history. This could be science. It could even be math. So this a lot of a lot of applications that you can have for this. The SQ3R chart. Um, this is another one that's good to um, read more complex material. And the SQ3R stands for Survey, Question, Read, Recite, and Review. In a wheel and spoke diagram, this is good um, for developing a framework for ideas and concepts. It's another good pre-writing activity, but just another way to see those visual connections between different concepts. Now there are some cautions that you want to be aware of when you're using um, graphic organizers. You don't want to assign these as worksheets. They need to have a purpose because when you just hand them out to your students as worksheets, they're tedious and they're just not effective. Um, your organizers should be appropriate for your students. If you remember back on the first slide, one of the more complex ones I showed, um, while graphic organizers can be used at any grade level, that one may not be appropriate for a kindergarten or first grade classroom. Um, so you want to make sure that your complexity is, is appropriate for your students and their, their abilities. You also want to keep the end goal in mind when you're selecting an organizer. So you want to be really intentional about these. So what do you want your students to know? Those are going to be the kinds of things that you want them to include in their organizer. Um, don't give them busy work. Um, this isn't a busy work activity. It really is something to help, help them to see connections between concepts. We don't want to just give them things for the sake of doing it. You also want to demonstrate the chart before giving it to your students. Um, you don't want to just hand it to them and say, here, do this. Um, it's, it's like with anything else that you do in the classroom, they need to understand how to use this tool. So you could have it, you could either have like a blown up version, um, like on the whiteboard that you could fill out, you could fill it out over a projector, you could do it like as a whole group. That way the students actually see what, um, how it is that they're supposed to use this. And then after you fill it out, you also want to have discussions based on the organizer so students see how it helps them. So don't have them do it and then never refer to it again. If you're going to bother to make the connections between the content and have your students really look deep into the information, you don't want to just throw that away when they're done. So you want to talk about it and let them really see um, how beneficial the graphic organizers are to them and their comprehension of the material. So I've also created um, just a one page handout. Um, it kind of goes over the things that we talked about in the PowerPoint. So it goes over what a graphic organizer is, the benefits, um, reasons why they're great, um, and there's three resources here. These are really great links that I'll have posted on Blackboard also. One of them is information on how to effectively use these, and it kind of goes over some of the cautions, like making sure that you're being intentional in your selection and making sure that you're pre-teaching and demonstrating how to use this tool. Um, there's also the second link is information on why they're effective. So if you want to learn a little more about that, it kind of goes into how um, it ties in with Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences and um, other ways that um, and reasons why um, these appeal and are so effective with a wide range of learners. And the last one is where to find some that are already pre-made. And thinkport.org was a great resource. Um, it has so many different kinds of graphic organizers that are already made up, and it even talks about um, how they're best used and like the best areas of in your classroom to apply these.